Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 12th. October 12th meeting of the sewer commissioners. I have to call the meeting to order and have a roll call. Donna Bronk. Malcolm White, present. Pete Dunlop, present. And Jim Giberti, present. And we have uh, minutes. <clears throat> I, make a, I make a motion of the minutes of the meeting of September 28th be approved as written and, and submitted to the board. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three, zero, one. Next item is abatements for Marks Cove Road. In the amount of five hundred and ninety six dollars. Move that we approve the rebate to uh, for 21 Marks Cove Road in the amount of $596 for the first and second half of 2000, well, first half of 2018 and the second half of 2017 as submitted by the superintendent. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four oh oh. Okay. Guy, you're on stage. Guy, oh, before you get started, could you could you explain a little bit thing about this the sewer thing? What didn't they do right? There's a valve. on the abatement. There's a curb there's a curb stop between when the end of the pipe it's a it's a it's a force main. There's a curb stop. The curb stop was never put on by the contractor. So there's a whole lot more involved, and so she's can negotiate with the contractor to get reimbursed for the reconstruction of another company that's going to be through the contractor, and and also another years of um, sewer use going to be through the contractor. Um, so she asked for the one year abatement. That's all I could do, the best I could do, and so I said you, we'll do that with you. And anything greater than that, you have to approach the contractor and get it. So that's what she's doing. Shouldn't that have been picked up on your inspection? No, because the inspection picks up the actually emptying of the tank, so the valve was open for the inspection. The house was vacant, so he was hired by an individual that owned the home that was not present, and he was told to shut it because that was the it, it, because the house was going to be vacant, which is not policy. So he did that. Mm -hmm. So he assumes that responsibility. So the they're all turned on. The curb stops are turned on by the contractor. That's part of their training, and they're certified in that in that um, that system. Okay, now you're on stage. Um, okay, I've got very little. Uh, things happen. One of the, which yeah. is, I'll do my very best. I have very very little. But one of the things I didn't want to talk about is we finished cameraing the 21 inch line concrete line from the Narrows Pump Station, all behind Main Street, which is Merchants Way. We took a left along the fire station to Main Street, took a right on Main Street, and took a left on Sawyer to High Street, and then took a left to a manhole that's fed by the force main from the Kennedy Pump Station. And that goes on to Viking Drive, which goes on to the Marsh, mm -hmm. which goes on to Ripley Trailer Park, which goes down Swiss Beach Road, and which goes to the force main from, from uh, Smith's Pump Station. That's all 18 at that end, 21 inches, the concrete reinforced con uh, concrete pipe. The last part we did, I believe, was 2,200 feet, and we found it's horrendous. There's, there's cracks, there's holes, there's leaks, there's rebar, there's... there's there's um, actually manholes that are leaking. So you add that to what we found on the marsh. The next week we're gonna do the piece behind Ripley's trailer park, because it's all that sewer, uh, this uh, sewer interceptor, and then we're going down Swiss Beach Road for the 18, and we assume that that's gonna be the same condition. So the project, instead of being just on the marsh, is that entire run of concrete pipe. 
So we'll put this all together. I have the videos, hasn't been presented to me yet. When you say that the entire, and you're talking from the Narrows pump station? All the way to the Swiss Beach, Swiss Road. Beach Road, where the Smith's pump station dumps into, which is halfway <laughs> down Swiss Beach Road. So that whole thing. What, kind of, a, what kind of a distance are we talking about? I want to say maybe 2.6 miles of pipe at $395 a foot approximately. So that's what we're looking at. It's all in grave condition. Um, and that is a main interceptor. It isn't something that we can fool with. So that seems to now be- Now that 395 a put, foot, that's for that's what we did. lining? That's what we did for Viking Drive, for lining. Okay. I'm using that. that that's all right. No, I just want to know what, to, I just want to make sure I'm talking about the same thing. So that's an existing number that I'm using. So yeah. that's- no, I just want to You're make sure- You're talking about 30, 30 years worth of piping, over 30 years. A pipe has been there forever. Yeah. I know Swiss, Swiss Beach went in the 70s. Went in 78. Yeah, so I don't know when. You mean it's not still under warranty? I, it, well, I will ask. It <laughs> okay. may be. No, the it's question good. is who am I going to find because that was a couple of bankrupt companies. <laughs> exactly. That pipe in, so I've got to figure out who's got so. It's, it's, it's a major, it's going to become a major project. So that's going to have to, I mean, there's SR funding and the whole nine yards. <laughs> we should have a completed CIP funding from our from our accountant uh, they project it to be done the end of october beginning of november and so we'll figure out they're trying to figure out do we use in-house money retained earnings do we use budget which we will and also borrowing from the SR, srf funding so we'll look at that part of it too because it's going to be a quite expensive project so and it's something that we cannot ignore it's so you're talking someplace between about around five and a half million dollars five to six million dollars absolutely and so we'll look at that and we'll have some. Do you think Swiss, is, is, is well, Swiss Beach went in after, after, well, in the 78. 1978. What, what, what kind of shape is that gonna be in? The rest of Swiss Beach, well, yeah. it's all asbestos, it's all horrendous. We have all, everything we find there is in trouble. So that, what we're trying to do is we can't do the entire town. We've got clay no. pipe that's no. just as old and in, in no. and whatever, and they all have issues. Yep. We're trying to fit the, you know, we're trying to pick out the, the greatest risk of structural and, and, um, and, and leakage. And so we're looking at not so much, we're looking at the life expectancy, obviously, but we're looking, one of the things we're looking at is consequence of failure. So I may have a pipe on 12th Street in Onset that if it fails, the consequence is those homeowners. Yep. If this interceptor fails, the consequence is a whole side of town. So you kind of weigh it out. So we're, as we go around doing all the cameraing and inspecting, it's okay, what's mm. the consequence with this fails and what's the impact? And so is, we try to make that decision Is there any way that. that we can put aside, like uh, we can set aside in a, like a capital fund uh, that, that we're gonna do, we're gonna do, uh, a million dollars a year. We, we are the part of that. Part of what the what the um, certified public accounting is giving to us for the CIP is to look at the twenty-year program, which includes every year was two million dollars of lining of pipe or okay. repairing of pipe. Okay. And so now we have to take the entire thing, and it's done. You know, one to three, three to six, six to nine, the whole nine yards. Okay. And so it's a funding mechanism, which yep. has to become part of the budget. Yeah. And so there may be raises of fees, so the user fee has to go up. Then there's a, to make these demands, there's borrowing, and there's some in the retained earnings. So all this has to be factored in. Oh. And so we get those numbers, so when we do the rate setting, that you have all these numbers, and then all these factors need to be, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's about $2 million just for lining. And there's other things that need to be done. We had projected, if you look at the CIP, it was $5 million annually for the next 20 years, just to come up to even. And it's, it's, and it's, a, it's countrywide. I mean, we look at what we, our issues with infrastructure, it's everywhere. And it's not just the sewer, it's buildings, roads, I mean, bridges, you name it, everything just, is in trouble. It just upsets me that we don't do this, we haven't done this sooner instead of waiting till later. And it's, a, it's a hard thing because it's kicking the can down the road, it's looking at money, budgets, what do you cut, you know, don't spend any money, da, 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 da. and that's been going on historically throughout the country and we're all paying the price because now the can is against the wall. There's no place to kick it. Yeah. Can we spread it out over a couple of years? We're trying to spread it out. The whole thing's gonna be spread over 20 years. So when we borrow the money, that becomes John Foster's advice. And so the accountant's gonna tell us what we, the best ways to do that, whether it's SR funding, whatever. And so that's gonna be our, our um, financial uh, director. 
and he'll figure out all that good stuff of budgeting. I've also, but we had a meeting yesterday, I brought to the attention that a lot of this money we can borrow at 0% interest. And it's really a shame because to do that, there's certain criteria. So if you sewer an area, and that area has houses that whatever they are, there's a, a, a if you will, a, so let's say two bedrooms, three beds, whatever the case may be. If you maintain that, which is smart growth, the state will give you through the federal government 0% financing. And we've never been willing to do that in town. We've borrowed millions at whatever the percent was, but we're looking into that. I talked to Dave McQueener, and uh, we had a, a department head meeting yesterday, Mr. Sullivan, and I suggested that we look into that criteria. So we stop borrowing money, it makes more sense to borrow that money at 0% interest because that's the significant savings over many, many years. So, um, so we're looking at that. So we're looking at all the different things we can look at because we have to fund it and we'll figure the best way out. What is the requirement for that? It's something, it's called, it's called, so, uh, and I don't have the exact term, I apologize, I told oh, them to look it up too. But, but what, what does it mean? What it's saying What's is the that translation? you have two bedroom cottages, we'll give you an example. Take Oak Street. There were two bedroom cottages that folks had in the summer because there was no sewer, they had septic and water. So they become two bedroom because a lot never allowed nothing greater. So we bring sewer in, so those two bedroom homes now become five, six, seven, eight bedroom mega mansions and multifamilies. So now what you projected for use in that area based upon the existing conditions is now blown out of proportion because the flow is greater. So what the state is saying, if you keep the flow pretty much the same, we'll give you 0% financing. So it's controlled, so the two bedroom homes So, stay so it's basically based on flow. Flow. It's all based on flow. That's the whole thing you're talking about is flow yeah. only. Okay. So you're going to put a restriction. When you, yeah, when you yeah. project yeah. Restriction on flow building. for an area. Because mm -hmm. when they, before they sewer, they project flow. You have to design. There's a design factor, flow factor. And so now when you blow those numbers out, that design factor becomes compromised. Right. So the state's saying if you don't compromise those, we'll give you 0% financing. So we'll look into the details. And I'll give the details to the building department, to Mr. Sullivan, and we'll look at the details and see if we can meet the details. And so I think it's, because I mean, we're going to borrow tons of money, it'd be best to borrow at 0% financing. So we're, that's what we're looking at to, to address this problem and others. So that's, that's, what we're, that's how we're approaching that. You, you said this is from the Narrows down along? Behind Merchant's Way. Yeah. Uh, along the fire station to Main Street. Okay. Take a right on Main Street. Take your first left on Sawyer. Go up Sawyer. Take a left on High Street. You go to the manhole that intersects High Street and Kennedy. That's the pipe we just finished inspecting. Okay. Now remember, we previously we, we inspected. Now what about further along? Remember, we've inspected from Kennedy Pump Station. We missed about 500 feet. Then we did all behind Viking Drive, which is the school, because we replaced some of the school. We went all along the marsh. We went to the end, to the back side of Ripley's Trailer Park. So now we're into Ripley's Trailer Park because we've done up to that point from Narrows Pump Station, we're going to Ripley's Trailer Park, and then we're going down Swiss Beach Road, probably about a mile, a little less than a mile. There's a manhole there that has a pipe connected to it from Smith's, which pumps into it. And that begins the reinforced concrete pipe. And that's what we're going to do, all the reinforced concrete pipe. And, so and below that is the, it, it's not 21 inch pipe, it's a smaller pipe and it's- It, it shrinks down, yes. It's, it's, the, other, it's, it's the other style pipe. So a lot of it's asbestos, but the force mains were, were, were all force mains, they made them out of cast. So what I feel with cast is they percolate inside and they get pitted. So we have to figure out how to do our mains. And we're not, we're not overly concerned about them. We are concerned, but again, the concrete is, is evident. And, and the problem is usually in a, in, a, in, a, in a force main, when it pushes, it pushes a full pipe. So you have less turbul you know, uh, uh, turbulence. When it hits the, the manhole, she's turbulent as crazy, and then that H2S just flows down that pipe, and so that's what's really eating this concrete pipe. How many manholes are we talking in that front? I, I, I don't have a con, there's quite a bit. There's, I don't have an actual comp, but there's quite a bit. Yeah, I, I, Dozen? Dozen, two dozen, there's quite a bit. That many. Absolutely. Behind Merchant's Way is 10, I think eight or nine, maybe 10. There's two, two Main Street, two on Main Street. There's one on Sawyer and then one on um, going into Kennedy. Kennedy. So that's just that one area. Yeah. So there's so quite a few. That, that's not included in that 395 foot, is it? Not at all. So the, the pipe is, is structurally and it's more critical and some of the manholes will, will spot repair a lot of the manholes, some will have to totally rehab. 
but we'll get a hard number. I'm just, I use figures, we get a hard number. And so if you're saying, I'm saying 395, there should be a factor. There's unknown factor, whether it's 20%, 25%, 30%, there's always included unknown factor, because there's always unknowns. I don't, when you redo a house, somebody says, redo my wall, you open the wall, so oh my God, I didn't know that. That's an unknown factor. Next time you rehab something, there's unknown factor. So there's a percent set aside for that. But we'll get a better feeling for once we, once we figure if it's 5,000 or 6,000 per man, oh, we'll get those numbers. Well, just that it would make sense to do them as you're coming along. Yeah, we'd like to. <clears throat> But again, it's a borrowing factor and phases and all that. Absolutely, we do all the main structural, come back to the nails. I don't know, we'll now, talk about that. What sort of shape are we in from the narrows to here? To, I mean, to the We plan. haven't done the force main. We're gonna do that over the winter. And so I'll let you know that. That's all, that's so, Dutch so line. That's going to be done before the second other project. The inspection of it. We're not gonna fix anything. We're gonna inspect it. Right now we're inspecting mode. Projects have to be budgeted and done, and, and they're, they're millions, and I can't just do them. They gotta go to town meeting, and there's gotta be borrowing, and it's to be an involved process, many people involved, it's budgeted. It's, and when I present my capital improvement, I try to present the whole thing, and they say, you know, and they say, we'll do just this, that, and I have no idea. I didn't know that Merchants was gonna rise to the top until I cameraed it. I cameraed it, now it rises above this. This I wanna do. 12th Street all of a sudden is falling off the table. 12th something I really want to do, but this becomes more critical because if that fails, I have a bigger headache. So that becomes more critical. So 12th all of a sudden went from here to here. Merchant's Way was an unknown and now it's here. And that's one of the dilemmas of cameraing. We're out there doing manhole inspections in marshes. We're digging up manholes in marshes and wetland because that's part of this project for the I and I study, which has to be completed by the end of the year. And we're finding some beautiful things in our manholes. And so they're gonna all of a sudden, some of them are gonna come up to the top. And so it's, it's, it's very fluid. As we inspect, you know, it gets to you be very, know. very fluid. It gets to be a problem which becomes more critical in that moment of inspection. So that's where we are. We just completed it. And when I do Swiss Beach and Ripley's, who knows what that's going to be. That may even that section. It, and I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I'm only guessing that it's going to be consistent with what we're finding because it's all the same type of material. I'm guessing. We may find it better, we may find it worse, but none, at the very least, I think it's gonna be equal to, and then we'll figure the whole project. That's Eventually, everything has to be lawned. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a long term. Yeah, yeah. When I was in Chicago, I met a lady, she's the chief engineer for the city of Chicago, and she's rehabbing pipes. She chose not to use epoxy five years ago. She's relining everything. Pretty interesting story because she saved money. It was cheaper to do this other product. She spent all the money doing pipes and it all failed. So she's redoing it, so she really didn't save money. So it was a very valuable for me presentation and it was very valuable to talk to her and understand that when you're gonna do lining, make sure you get the right product. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Okay, so that, that's, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on that. Uh, I think that actually that was it for me. And I just wanted to talk about Chicago and that was one of the things that we, we gleaned that was pretty, pretty. The other thing we gleaned was we met the manufacturers of bulbs and sleeves for Trojan, which is our supplier for our UV lights. We are, Trojan has put in their contract, when we bought these back in 1999, is that if we use any other bulb or sleeve, then they cannot guarantee the kill that we have obligations to kill bacteria before it gets to the water. So we've been obligated to buy their lights and their sleeves and their lights, their UV lights and they're pricey. This company manufactures for Trojan. So they're gonna work with us trying to get Trojan to give us the specs. They have them, but they've got to release them from Trojan and they'll make us a light at a reduced price. For me, that was a huge find. So we're working that too. So it was really a good profitable time and I'm hoping the town benefits. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Unfinished business. Tie and bond. Where are we with them? No place. We're waiting for, they're waiting for, to get a agreement with the water and they'll move on. Once they know that we have something. When they did on. they tell you that? The, they, they told us at the end of the meeting because it's, well, it's as of spending money. yesterday, they just hadn't moved forward and there was no discussion of, and there was no discussion about uh, an IMA, that's not necessary for them to do anything. 
But where we ended it last, yes, it became necessary because we were spending money. If we expend, if we have very little left in the budget, we have to increase the budget. And so Mike said, I can expend that last $2,000. And I'll do that. It won't get you where you need to be. I'll do that. But it makes more sense to me and to my company is that when we have something viable is that this is going to be a viable to the IMA and we have an agreement, then we'll expend all the money and expend all the energy. So if you want to do that, you want to spend all the money and energy before that, I, I can call Mike tomorrow and tell him to go ahead. And oh, I talked with him yesterday. Yeah, this is all my last and, conversation with Mike. And that's um, asked him to get moving to get something started here because we're waiting been sitting around too long waiting on this and uh, his part is small uh, I, I, I believe he can run so, his numbers it's okay so we how much uh, he's got all the information how much how much uh, of a budget is left with them about 1500 bucks okay so once that's expended then we we start from ground zero which yeah I and mean, he's gonna expend that in your orders so that'll be gone within the week okay and we'll have to figure out how we allocate more funds for that another contract so maybe we better work on a contract first yeah. Okay. So we need a contract oh. for tie and bar. Okay. We'll put it down the contract. Well, how about some results before we get a new contract? Well, well you're not going to get results with the 1500 bucks. I can have him spend the 15 do what he has. Absolutely. But engineers work. I mean, it isn't, it's like 160 bucks an hour. You tell me. Well, what have we got? compilation of data, collection of data, every time they get paid to do all that work. I mean, every time they do something, the clock ticks at 160 bucks per hour. I don't, even their research is costing so money. My question is, what have they done? They've done quite a bit in the past to expend the money. I think we, we I got the report, it was pretty extensive. All the, they've done all the research. They've done nothing in the new part. They've, right now, they're gathering information. So we'll expend the, the 1500 bucks to take this information and compile it, and then we'll have to get another contract to go further. Okay, so well, they haven't gather, oh, gathered any see. further information since whenever they gave that stuff they to you. They have correct. not gathered any further. Not correct. Two weeks ago, we sent him everything. The, uh, he requested modern information, and he's gotten it. Well, he's looking for uh, what he hasn't got that he said he was waiting for was figures, numbers. We gave him the budgets in the okay, last four well, years. He's got those. Uh, okay, okay. So yesterday, what we may be waiting for is the CIP numbers from the in, from Mr. Because the CIP has to be included, so he needs the budget for that to be included in his numbers also for a final rate setting. That he won't get, and he's working and he's got permission to work with Mr. Abrahams to get those numbers. So they and they collaborate on many many jobs anyways. So he'll get those numbers, and that those numbers have to be included in his setting too. So all those factors have to be yeah absolutely has to be put in. So we've sent him two weeks ago. We sent him a whole bunch of information. Uh, it may even be a little greater than two weeks. It may have been three weeks. But he's gotten all the information he's requested after our last meeting. He's gotten everything. Okay. Well, it didn't sound that way when I spoke with him. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll talk to him again. I'll have him send it over an email, so we'll have it in writing. As to where I'll email him tomorrow saying, give me an update. What do you have? What do you need? Okay. And writing. For the next uh, meeting, can we get a list from you of the changes you want to see in the IMA? The born IMA. In writing. Sure, we have those. We okay, have, have could you send, uh, send a copy of that out to us? Yes, I, what I'll do also, I'm going, to, I'm going through my last two years of meetings or whatever it was. We have those already that went out. I'm pulling back a lot of stuff out. Of well, we're, bit, so we'll get into we're missing yeah. that someplace because yeah, I because we'd like to get that there. updated and get moving on that. Yep, put in writing where we are, what's needed. Anybody have anything else? No. Ty and Vaughn has been given all the information. So all they're doing is putting it together? Yeah, they're, they're, they're I mean, together. they're not going. And then they have to calculate. And so again, there's many people involved. So like anything else, you expend the funds you have and you stop. And then you get more funds that continue, and that's and that's what they're doing. So I went from the, I'm going to ask Mike to send me in writing where he is, what he needs, what's left in the budget, and what, and, and then we'll go from there. And and when I have that, I'll send it over to you. And, we can and how much you. is it going to cost to give us a final answer? I don't know. Answer. I have no ask idea. Ask him. I'll ask absolutely. A, a projected budget, absolutely, because that becomes time. 
And so what's the projected time to get us to where you want, which is you want a number to tell the public. Is that if I understand exactly. correctly? Okay. So to get to that point, I'll ask us for a time frame and the whole nine yards. And then you'll get that. We'll put a budget to it. We'll write a contract and we'll go from there. A new business, we've got this Excuse me. GHD proposal here. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, excuse me. This is the final phase of the project to rehabilitate Narrows. Hassett Narrows and Hines under the Resiliency Program, the Resiliency Grant, to bring it to 100%. So this is a grant, I, and I, gosh, I should have got the numbers. So I think it's a $120,000 grant. We're obligated for 25%, and the state has the balance. So this is the contract, the GHD to move forward. It's been to Mr. Bowen. There's been some adjustments made, some things crossed out, and he approves it to form. And now I'm asking you folks, to approve it, to send it to the town so we can get him paid as he finishes What are up. we approving dollar-wise from what you just said? Are we only responsible for 25% of this $130,000? So if you look at the first page, service agreement, it breaks it down for you. Which is the first page? Then it gives you the exhibits. Then it gives you scopes of the exhibits. Then it gives you the price and index. So everything is there, and you can look at exactly. You look at Exhibit B, it's very specific, the certifications. The front page tells you the overall cost. And so that it's all in the contract. And this is done through the state grant, and the state, uh, the coastal zone management is the one that's implementing this. They're the ones paying for the bulk of it. We are, we're out of 25%. The coastal zone management, the state grant is paying 75%. 25% of this amount? Total, yeah. So we're, we're paying about 32,730. Yeah, so we're paying 32,700. That's right. The balance is being paid by the state of Massachusetts. Okay. Well, coastal zone what was that, John? 32,700. So that's the breakdown of the grant. And this is the final grant. When it's done 25%, with this, Peter. The, um, the, Pump station will be for final design, ready for permitting and construction. And the next phase will be looking for funds to actually. Well, this is only going to be for 95% of the final design. 100% of the final design. This is for 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I make a motion that we. Just why, why did they say 95%? Because 95% is for final approval. And once they approve it, then it goes to the 100% completion. 100% will be where they start applying for all the permits. So 95% is approved. They get you to contract, I'm sorry, they get you to plans that are ready to be submitted for approval. That's 95%. And, and, the, and the industry is general because that's when you get paid. 95%, 95% you're authorized to be paid. So that, that's just terminology to my understanding. But when they're complete, it'll be 100%. And I can send you the contract or the, the, the scope written to us by the state of Massachusetts. Patricia Bowen, who's in charge of this project, is the one that's given us these numbers. And, and GHD gets the numbers from the state. Because it's their grant. It's the state's grant. It's implemented by the state. It, it's approved by the state. And it's also watched by the state. There are progress meetings with the state as we go along. So they're totally involved because they're spending their money, which is taxpayers' money also. Now, this, this is going to bring these pump stations for the uh, higher elevation for the 100-year flood and all of that stuff. Correct. Oh. Correct. Those three stations. Correct. And, you know, we may never see a flood. No, but they're going to make us do it this way. Well, the, the reality is it's going to be done. Anything to do with femur and flooding, and if you're in a plane, if you get flooded and you want to rebuild, you can't unless you bring it up. They won't finance it. You can do it yourself, but you'll get no flood insurance. You'll get nothing, and that's just the way that things are working today because FEMA's tired of rebuilding. 
they've been rebuilding forever, not here as much as in Florida or in New Orleans and other areas. They've been, and so their policy extends nationwide. And they're saying, we're, we're, we just can't keep building with taxpayers' payers in an area that you know is prone to flood, that's in the floodplain, and you keep rebuilding and keep getting it blown away. So what happened, a, a policy for the country affects areas like us that don't really have it much, but we still have to come into the same policies and procedures. Thank you. Just to, to reiterate, just to make, make sure I'm clear on this, with this contract that you are uh, looking to be approved and signed is only committing us to 32700 Correct. The us. rest of that is? The rest is the state. Yes. The state, okay. That's right. Okay, do I have a motion? I did, I tried to make a motion. I'm sorry. I make a motion that we accept the contract as proposed for services for the final design for the three priority pump stations. As long as it doesn't cost us any more than 32,700. At, at a cost not to exceed $32,700. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zip zip. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'm yes. sure you already have seen it, but in your policy was, in your pack was the new open meeting laws that was handed out in yesterday's meeting uh, with Mr. Sullivan, and, and I've been asked to make sure you folks get it. That's all I would give it to you. We punched it through your manuals. I'm asking that you re review it and read it. There's some changes. Um, and just so you, and we are, and we do open, we're totally by open meeting laws. It affects everything we do. So I just want to make sure that we all read it, understand it. And as we move forward, um, I promise I'll do it. So I've done it. And I'm done. Thank you. Um, before you close, do you, do you have any update on this? That's, oh, that's yes, I, right. Do you, Guy, have you had any uh, conversation with that property potential? The um, you're talking about the one down cost at Narrows. Yes. Right. No, I have not. I'm waiting to, uh, and it's I. After that meeting, things got busy. I have to. So let me back up to be for full disclosure. I've discussed it with the town manager a long time ago, mm -hmm. and we had to, I went, I approached the folks, we had to get a letter from them to do an official request, and so we'll follow that through, so I'll go back to Derek, and we'll get the appraisers. We already talked to an appraiser. We already got an estimate to appraise it. We'll get that all worked and have it appraised, so we know what the value is, and then we'll, when we negotiate, we'll do have Do you a, have a figure that they're looking for? They have no figure. They've been offered a half a million for it, so I don't know what the appraisal is going to be, and so we don't know the value. And when they got the offer, they come to us and said, it would be a shame, you know, um, to lose this property. So I said, we pursue it. I don't know where it's going to go, but I told them at the very least, I pursue it. How wide is our right-of-way access? Uh, it's, we've got, if you look at the property, I don't know if I can get yeah, it. Yeah, I've got the picture right here. You have the picture? Yeah. Okay, so I can show you specifically. So let's go bring it up on that. I and mean, I've been down there and looked at it. So this is the property. So you can see this is our right away right here. This is for parking, the entrance to do it and bring things in. But this walkway is there. So we have a pipe easement that's approximately 15 feet that goes like this. And that's our easement to work if we have to work on that pipe. Nothing else is ours. We have the right to the easement here along this wall if we have that pipe. So that's our easement. It, it, is, that's, that's big enough for you to get your truck in. The difficult part for us is that if you look where our trucks go, and then you look, there's a fence there, and then we come up through the fence and we walk up a set of stairs, and there's a, a, a walkway. That's theirs, that's on their property. And so it was the so easement should have extended along the whole front of the building, here. and it did not. 
There's and, so the, and the point is, these folks have been gracious with us. They, they're good neighbors. The if the judge trying to call us, if there's people fighting, I mean, okay. anything that they call us, they're really so good neighbors to us. They've done a lot for really. us. And so their concern was that you may not get somebody like us, and we, we agreed. And so they said, we'd like to give you the right to first refuse. If you refuse, that wouldn't, it doesn't break their heart. They just want to give us the opportunity to own the whole thing, because it's our pump station, and then there. And it has added benefits, like the dock that has repairing <coughs> rights. There's mm. also there's rights to put a, uh, a marina there, so all oh, that yeah. comes with the property. Yeah, yeah. So they figured that maybe something beneficial to the town. So therefore, they said, let's at least present it in where the chips fall. Let them fall where they may. And so that's why we're pursuing it. But the property is is that larger square you drew last time, right? That's the it's, it's, it, it's in yes. total. So the dock, the dock so this part of it. this captain. Alice. Captain Harris's Harris. fish market. Oh, fish yes. Yeah, yeah. Wrong one. Well, yeah, it's right down the street. Cap right down the street, street. Captain Harris's fish market. Wait, he that. purchased it. He used to do fish for a while. Oh, yeah. and What's there now? To, it's a regular. It's a home. He lives in. It's a residence. It's, it's a residence. residence. Yes, it's his residence. It's yeah. Oh. It's his residence with 480 power. It's, it's in tough shape. Excuse me. 480. That's what I thought you said. It's a residence with 480 power. And four eight, you know, if we can afford four eighty, it's expensive to put in, but it's cheaper to run. So in the long term, four eighty. That was one of the debates we used to have with CDM. They like two twenty single phase, which is very expensive. Four eighty for pump stations is the right. only way to go. Absolutely, but that's three. That that's three phase. Yeah, that was one of our contentions. So they have four eighty three phase in that residence, which used to be a fish market. Right, I remember it's that. It's incredible. It's yeah. incredible what he's done with it. So they live there. That's their residence. And they babysit and they watch everything for us. So when you plug the toaster in, you don't have to worry about blowing a fuse. You should go in. It's amazing. They're really interesting people. They, it's it's crazy. They've insulated. They've done great. I mean, it, it's incredible what they've done. They, and that was their retirement home after they did the fish market. So. Now, uh, that's not Captain Harris that had the Captain Harris fish market, is it? Yes, he had, yeah. he had the fish. Oh, it is. He's yeah. the one that had the fish market. Okay. Yeah. All right. They're okay. really nice guy. He talks about the fishing business. Yeah, like okay. Pump fish all up and down. Oh, yeah, I know. Coast. He was quite a, I mean, the guy just, yeah. great stories. Mr. McDermott, great guy. Yeah. I mean, what I a personality. I didn't know what his name was, right. So there's potential for us, if we were to come up with a half a million dollars to buy it, is that what you said? Yes, that's what was offered. I don't know what the price would be. I would be okay, but, miss, but if, if we go on that offer. premise yep. and we own it, we could lease this out. Absolutely, whatever, whatever. And, and part, recover part of that. Absolutely, you could lease it out. You could lease out now, the dock. Would you that could, be ours or the town's? Well, I, I'm not. I would say to you because enterprise funds would be expended. It'd be enterprise property. But remember, the town owns everything anyway. So that's a. Mm -hmm. That's a question. A I think the enterprise fund would have control of it, would probably get the revenues to pay back loans, all that good stuff. But ultimately, everything's owned by the town. The school department's independent, yeah. but it's <coughs> the town. So ultimately, the town owns everything. So that's, I, but, I, but if the money is spent, expended from the enterprise, and the enterprise has ownership and control and all that. But the and and the you say there's a potential there for a marina? Absolutely. It's all built into the deed. God. And one of our thoughts where we have a harbor mass, so we've got a resources. Maybe it could be leased to the, I don't know. There's just so much potential. And so it made no sense to not pursue it right. and all the potentials of that piece of property. Of course, that bridge doesn't open any longer, though, does it? No, but they redid it. It doesn't open at all. And, the, for the, and one of the problems is tide. You see the boats in there, they're all shallow. So you get low tide, you can get the bigger boats through. But that's one of the issues. Yeah. That's one of the issues. But it's a protected base. So if you had a small 16-foot or whatever, you look at Captain Al's. His, his, his docks are filled. Every summer, he's full. He's chock full. So obviously... Yeah, he's got to get under that bridge, right? That's right. So obviously, there's a, there's a market for it because he's doing a great job. Captain yeah. Al's doing you a great job. Just go out and come back at low tide. You just get, you plan it. You got to plan it. Or you've got to moor on the other side of the bridge and wait, whatever. But he does well. And obviously, it's profitable because he's doing it. So we definitely sell beer at this place while they wait. <laughs> Sounds fair to me. I mean, he's done well with it, so. JD. So how, how did you say you left it with them? I it's told them that I pursue it. So my next move is to Mr. Sullivan to get approval to move forward on the appraisal. Mm -hmm. The appraisal is everything. For us, we need, we're going to have a commercial appraisal. We can't get the town appraisal to get down on an appraisal property. Yeah, I don't think you want to. 
<laughs> We're gonna get an appraisal. <laughs> yeah, leave it there. Are you appraisal. trying to say something? I'm saying nothing. We're gonna get an appraisal. Sounds fair. Uh, What's it appraised for now? The policy that we uh, have been dealing with has been updated, uh, added in the uh, trench permit fee. I don't, I don't, uh, did she give it to me? I don't have it, so you may have it. Maybe she put it in here. That's, that's the, the I, I have the copy because I made a copy of it when she sent it to me. Uh, okay. So everybody can All take right. a look. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a copy. If anybody has a. Okay. Oh. You don't. That's essentially the same one we went over. It's essentially the same thing okay. we had, except that, that the, the only thing that was added was that the, uh, bold. It added the bold that $200 fresh oh, okay. Which is MGL, I forget when it was adopted. The town adopted it. And the fee of the sewer, which was approved, I believe, I don't know who the board was, but they approved it. Was Brenda yeah, it Extreme. wasn't a policy, it was a separate. It was a policy on yeah. the sewer, raising it to 200 So we're including it in the in policies at this point. But. Now this is this is to replace policies one, three, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, and sixteen. Okay. If we approve it, and obviously, do we do we, do we make it policy number twenty-five since that's what we had? was 24 up till now? Um, or do we make it 68 because that's what it adds up to? Oh, that sounds good. Welch. Well, I guess first of all, is this that an acceptable policy to everyone? Anybody have any questions on it? Or? This is that same material that I gave you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just, just yeah. that bold print added. Yep. yep. I so, see it. So, so that's what we that's what we questioned the last time was so this is on the unfinished business okay so okay. finished business policy if it's comprehensive I'm good with it it's got everything all right so you want to make a policy yeah. so I have a motion do we want to call it 25? I, w I would say call it 25. That's, that well, would do be you want to skip one or two just to be safe in case we find more that, that are in here someplace? Okay, until the final draft, you mean? Well, this would be the final draft. This would be final, I, and I, I agree with so, you. 25 would be. Yeah. Number, and so we could actually. So go with 25? 25. All yeah. right, fine. Makes sense, and then. I make a motion that we draft. accept. Policy 25. 25. And replaces policies 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, and 16. Exactly. Do you have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four Aye. zip zip. We have new policy number 25 uh, gravity sewer connection fees and applications, which does as he said. <clears throat> okay. So we'll Will Rebecca make copies of this so we can put a lot in our books? Mm -hmm. Terrific, thank you. The, uh, All right, next meeting I'll bring you two, four, and six. <coughs> next meeting is on the 26th. Of November? Oh. oh December, wait, they were still in October. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm already moving ahead. Sorry about that. You want to have it before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving? I don't know. Uh, well, or are instead of Thanksgiving. <coughs> I may not be here for that one. Whew. When's the next meeting? 26. Of what? October. 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 Okay. I went to Thanksgiving for some reason. I, I went right to Thanksgiving. Hey, like, you wow, got me all, all messed up with Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I may be in Connecticut on that one, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, we'll make the motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 7.15. Okay.